Okay, there's a 220 UF cap here, 450 volt. It's being filled by this full wave bridge, which has its AC legs going to the source and the drain of the MOSFET that's uh, powering the motor through this optic timing switch. It's drawn about 50 milliamps over here, and here's the voltage in the cap. So, when I hook up the voltage, so this tells you what the voltage is in the cap now. I have the voltmeter hooked up, and it's 70 volts. So, 70 volts, I disconnect one of these lacy legs, I can discharge it without affecting anything. That's down to zero. So watch, fill it up, let's do that again, it's just, it's going to flinch a little, watch that up there. Flinched up as it filled, up to 46 in that short amount of time. Now I have this con disconnected, so now it's okay to discharge. Down to zero. Fill it up. Flinch a little. Now discharge it. Okay, so that's how you do it. You fill it up, and then you disconnect it, then you discharge it when it's disconnected, okay? Now, let's just fill it up real quick. Okay, so it only goes to 28 because I did it so quick. Now, watch that amp meter as it's already at 28. And I'm going to fill it up. It doesn't move at all as it goes up to 53. That's because when you have the cap already filled halfway, it's much less resistance in the cap as compared to having it at zero. So when you tune your discharge of the cap to your load like you're charging a battery or something, or whatever you're doing, you have to decide how far down you want this cap to go. or have the system decide for you. Okay, now we're down at zero. Watch what happens when you're at zero. See, it flinches up. And if this is all going on really fast, that little flinch is going to stay up there. So that isn't that shows increased draw. We only went up to 44. Remember when we had a 22 UF cap, it was all the way up to 100 and something too. So that is the other thing. How much voltage do you want in your cap? And that'll be dependent somewhat on lots of it dependent on the UF value of the cap. And then there's the time you collect, how many pulses, like when I do it like this long, it goes up to 60. If I do it like just that long, it's only up to 29. So how many, uh, there's eight times in a revolution, there's pulses, so every time the pulse turns off, it creates that back EMF recoil. So, uh, uh, you have to also decide how many pulses you want to collect, and then how many times you want to discharge. You want to do it after each one, or maybe wait after four. That's what I'm going to be doing with this. I'm going to have another timing disc here, above this one, and I have another optic interrupter glued to the top and uh, I'm going to have a discharge circuit that's going to be four pulses then discharge four pulses discharge so it's going to be at that rate that's what I'm planning on so there's a lot of factors here there's how many pulses do you want to charge the cap up with uh, there's the size of the cap, and there's also the discharge on time, the pulse width, and there's also 
uh, the pulse width filling it too is another factor and then there's uh, if you want it non-reflective 100% or not or if you want it a little reflective where it amps just go up a little bit and also how far down the cap goes to does it go to zero does it go to 10 volts does it go to 20 volts upon each discharge so all of these uh, are variables I guess you call them so that's uh, back EMF recoil recovery tests with this 